Again, welcome to Earth Science for a Better World. And if you're just joining us now, my name is Kelly Lacante. I'm the Professional Development Manager at the National Center for Interactive Learning at the Space Science Institute. Now, I'm going to introduce our presenters at, at the Lunar and Planetary Institute in just a moment, but I'd like first to make sure that you're able to connect in with us. So uh, we've got on the left side of your screen, you should be seeing something, a, a slide set. And on the very top of that, it says Earth Science for a Better World. It's got hands-on activity icon up there. So if you're not seeing that, please look at the very top of your screen and make sure you're clicked on the Earth Science tab there at the top. If you have any trouble finding it, please do let me know. But I want to give you a couple other tips here. Uh, on your right side of your screen, you should be seeing a video feed, and that will be changing as we go through the presentations, and you'll get to see lots of hands-on activities up close. So make sure that you can see that by opening up that participant's uh, drop-down uh, option there for you. It should pop out. You should be seeing a video stream right now. Also, there is a chat button, and we'd love to interact with you on the chat. So please do type away in there. Uh, let us know comments, questions. We've got a poll open right now. So please make sure that you're able to access those and uh, interact with us. We do ask that you uh, make sure that in your chat, you're addressing your questions or comments to all attendees, not just the host or the presenters, uh, but all attendees. Otherwise, the uh, will kind of screen out your, your notes from everyone else. So uh, we look forward to having that chat with you. And uh, if you are having any audio problems, please click the communicate button there up at the top and do a test audio or reconnect to audio. Sometimes all it takes to get past the hiccup is to just run a test. If there's any questions, I'll be monitoring chat to let you know, um, just help you out, make sure you're having a good experience. Um, and at this time, it's my pleasure to introduce my colleagues at the Lunar and Planetary Institute. Um, and uh, especially like to introduce Christine Schupla, who is going to be facilitating today's experiences for you. Christine is the education lead at the Lunar and Planetary Institute, where she assists with, ma with management, but she also uh, uh, does professional development and materials development for teachers, informal program providers librarians, and informal science educators. I uh, had the pleasure of working with Christine for about seven years, and she's amazing. So it's my pleasure to turn it over to Christine. Christine. Well, folks, I hope everyone can hear me. If you're having any trouble hearing me, please do let me know. So we're delighted to be with you. And um, I'm going to try to keep my eye on the chat box as well. Um, so let's make sure that, that you can hear. Uh, if you have any issues, let us know right quick. Welcome. Uh, let's get started. We're going to be talking about Earth Science for a Better World. We have a number of activities that Kelly and actually developed uh, for many of these or, or adapted some of them. We're going to be going over three now, and then in 45 minutes for our second webinar, we'll do three more. All of them are available online, both under the Explore webpage and under the Starnet webpage. So, um, let's see, I forwarded it, but it doesn't seem to be forwarding. Do I need to do something to take the ball? Um, Did you forward the screen? I, I, I forwarded it on, it's, it's forwarding on my screen, it's not forwarding on your screen. Do I need to, so if it didn't forward on your screen, that means that it didn't work for anybody else in there. Hmm. Um, so right now, I'm looking at the second slide, everyone, um, where it says resources. And um, we need to make sure that these are forwarding for everyone. The second slide there that says resources, and it says uh, connect your Earth Science resources. You can access these activities at the StarNet Libraries website. Uh, Kelly and, uh, would be delighted to help you there, as would Anne. Um, in addition to the... Um, that program on the third slide, you'll be able to see um, our Explore program website as well on the third slide. So um, I don't know why the slides aren't forwarding for you. We'll try to get this fixed. Um, and just, uh, sorry, Christine, just to check in with everybody, is it advancing now? Are you seeing slide number three? All right, I'm seeing some yeses, Christine, so I think we're good to go. 
please do keep letting us know if you have any trouble seeing what you need to see. Okay. I suspect that probably what's happening is I'm forwarding it on my computer, but that's not forwarding for everyone else. I think that when um, Joey forwards, then it forwards for everyone else. So Joey and I will make this work. Um, there's a number of, of activities and resources uh, here at LPI. Um, we've worked extensively with StarNet on these activities, and yes, the slides will be made available after the presentation. Great question. Um, so, next slide. Um, we have three activities for you. The first one is called Fastest Dresser. Uh, these activities can be, um, in some cases, for older kids, some of them can be younger, or you can modify them. So for this first activity, Fastest Dresser, we're going to switch cameras. Joey, we're going to switch cameras, and we are going to have, joining us at the other camera, you are going to be seeing at the other camera um, George and Patricia and Andy and Yolanda. Um, let's zoom out as far as we can, so that way we can get their faces in there. And, okay, so. <laughs> the one who's kneeling is Andy. Um, <laughs> there, George is on the left. George Kramer is one of our scientists. She's a professional lunatic. She studies the moon. Right next to her is Patricia Craig. Dr. Patricia Craig studies Mars, and she's on the team for the Mars Curiosity rover. Andy is uh, normally the tallest, but he wanted to be in view, so he, he is my, uh, my co-lead here at LPI in terms of education and, and public engagement. He leads our public engagement efforts. And next to him is Yolanda Ballard. Yolanda is our administrator, assistant programmer, technical support. Yeah. Um, and so, for this activity, next slide, we are going to be, um, we are going to have them raise to dress and clothes appropriate for a specific type of weather. So, a question for you folks. Uh, Kelly, let's go ahead and pull up the next poll. And while, while uh, we're doing the next poll, um, I can be asking them questions. Um, the next poll is about climate and what the weather is like where you live. The, um, this is about engaging your audiences, and, and it's fundamentally written for young children. However, you can modify it, and we'll talk about modifications to bring it up for older kids. Um, they race to dress up in different types of clothing based on the weather, and what they are going to do is they are going to, um, I'm going to give them a type of weather. Uh, I'm going to look up a date, look up what the weather was on that date, and then have them decide what sorts of materials they might need to wear for that. So some of you folks are answering the poll question there, what the climate is like in your region compared to the rest of the U.S., dry and cool, and these are all relative terms, right? Um, cool in Alaska is very different than cool in, you know, in Houston. Well, in average, on average, how would you describe your climate? Of across the year. So um, we're going to go ahead and lock down those polls in a minute. Um, and when the poll is up, you can't see the video feed. Okay, we'll be closing the poll momentarily. We're going to uh, close it now. It'll take a few minutes to show. And, um, and let's go ahead and let's go to the next slide here. And as you can see, uh, some of you didn't answer, but uh, we have wet and cool, dry and warm, and wet and warm. We don't have anybody dry and cool. We have one person. <laughs> One person out of all 56 participants said that their weather is dry and cool. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and reopen the video. And you can do that by opening the participants uh, block there, and you can see the video. So click up where it says participants, ladies and gentlemen, and you will be able to see the video. And I have picked up some dates here in Houston. January 4, 1967, in Houston, the low was 28 degrees Fahrenheit. The high was 61 degrees Fahrenheit, January. January 4th, 1967, low was 28, high was 61 Fahrenheit, there was no precipitation. Let's remove the tablecloth, and your task is to figure out what you might need to wear on January 4th, 1967, with a low of uh, 28 and a high of 61, here in Houston. Go! <laughs> Okay, and so we have 
some coats and some warm things. Now, some of you who live in much cooler climates might think, oh, well, I would be fine with a bathing suit in that temperature, but anyway, <laughs> okay. So excellent, excellent job. Okay, next. Let's do November 24th, 1985. The low was 66 degrees. This was in November, close to Thanksgiving. The high was 80. This is Houston, after all. And it was rainy. What would you need? Oh. High of 80 degrees, low of 66, and it was raining. And so we have an umbrella. We have some hats. We have another umbrella. <laughs> and Andy grabbed the goggles. <laughs> and a sun hat. Okay, let's do let's do one more. Let's make it um, let's make it August twentieth, two thousand one. August twentieth, two thousand one. The low was seventy five, the high was eighty nine, and there was no precipitation. No precipitation. It was low in seventy five, the high was eighty nine. What would you wear? What about the humidity? Um, it was it's Houston. It was humid. This is Houston. It was humid. Okay, so we've got caps. We've got light coats. Awesome. Great job! Fabulous! Yay! Thank you so much. Okay, so our question for our attendees, all of the participants. Um, how would you alter this activity for older kids, for tweens, for teens, what we just saw? And of course, you would continue to talk with them about the, um, you would continue to talk with them about the weather, about climate, about the difference between weather and climate. As, uh, as one of our former colleagues used to say, weather, and she got this quote, I think it's a fabulous quote, um, weather is, is what you dressed for today. Climate is what is in your closet. So all the different things that are in your closet compared to what you're wearing today for the weather. Um, so you'd have to talk to them about weather, about climate uh, for all of this. Um, but how would you modify this activity, which I, you know, you can imagine the young kids might scramble at? And this is the part where you, where we invite you to type things in the chat box, please. Joey, can you go ahead and open up the chat box for me to see what they're typing? And it looks like some people um, lost some video. Lost us there for a little bit. Casey says it looks fun for all ages. Certainly our scientists were, were good about, about joining us for this and, and having fun with it. Um, I can imagine that maybe some teens might be uncomfortable with this game. Um, ways that you might modify it is giving them some graphics of different elements and having them scramble to use cards instead of actually grabbing real things. Um, so cards might be a way to modify it. Any other comments or questions? Okay. Choices. Give them more choices. Fewer choices for the younger kids. And teens might, uh, yeah, maybe a cutout. Maybe a cutout doll or something with different things for them to, to put on. The younger kids with the teens, great, great idea. So combining them. All right. We'll give a few more seconds. It looks like a couple of people had some technical issues, but I think most of you were able to stick with us. Let's go ahead and let's move on to the next question and the next activity. The next activity here, nurturing life. Kelly, can you please go ahead and open up the next poll um, as well? Have the younger kids dress the teens. Ooh, that could be fun. <laughs> Have the teens be your cutout dolls. <laughs> so our next uh, poll here is about gardens. How many of you happen to have gardens? Um, and um, Patricia just raised her hand. She's got a garden. Do you have a garden at your institution, ladies and gentlemen? Do you have a place outside of your library, outside of your community center? Um, uh, that you that you can use. Are you considering one? And we yes, as is indicated in the chat box, the write up for faster stressor is is online. Um, I emailed out links to all of the activities 
to everyone that I had linked for just about an hour ago. And some of you received three emails from me already. Um, so let's go ahead and let's close the poll. And while we're closing the poll and waiting for the results, for Nurturing Life, it's the opportunity here to explore with your audience about growing things and talking about what things need to survive and what they need to thrive by uh, creating and caring for a garden. Um, you can uh, work with your audience to plant an outdoor garden. You can work with them to plant an indoor garden. Or you can make take-home gardens. So we're going to demonstrate here what a take-home garden looks like. It looks like 16 of you have gardens at your institution and 19 of you don't. And, um, and a couple people, six of you, are considering growing one. Awesome. If you don't have a garden and you're not really considering growing one with the kids, uh, take-home gardens can be a lot of fun. So that's what we're going to do next. Let's go ahead and let's close that poll up and let's look back at the video. So again, if you can't see the video, you might need to click on the panelists or the participants up at the top right up there, it should say participants. And after you click on that, um, let's go ahead and talk about some of the different things. Now, some of you are already talking about how you can help with, how you do help with community gardening projects. Um, of course, those of you who are already doing uh, gardening projects with the kids, that's great. Um, and learning about where their food comes from, absolutely, absolutely good idea. Um, let's see, my clicker's not working. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about what this might look like in terms of a take-home garden. So you could give them each a flower pot. However, if you've got a large number of kids, you might want to make it a little bit simpler, um, such as taking a bottle. And this bottle um, is going to be the, their planter. And in order to help keep the moisture in, we're going to um, we're going to cut it open. So now we have a top and a bottom. You would want one of these for each of the kids as their take-home garden. In the bottom of it, you're going to add some gravel. It can be fish aquarium gravel, something that is going to keep your soil from being constantly saturated which would probably not be terribly healthy for many plants. You want to put about half to uh, three-quarters of a cup of gravel in the bottom. So you should take a look at that there. And then after that, you want to add two cups of potting soil to it. So we've got a couple cups here of potting soil. And I'm going to see if I can do this without getting dirt everywhere. My coworkers can assure you I, I am not always talented at keeping the room clean. So, okay, so now we've got some potting soil in here. Now, next, decide what you want them to plant. Pick some seeds or maybe even a little plant that's already th that you bought at the store. And many of you are sharing some great ideas here. Um, so what we have here is we have some squash seeds and follow the directions. It'll tell you how far apart to put them if you want to do just one or two versus several. And after you put them in there, you're going to add some water, just half a cup. You want the water to fill the gravel part down at the bottom. So it's going to sink through the soil, wet the soil. And, and you want it to, to fill the gravel part. You want the gravel part to be completely filled with water. And then after that, you're going to take the top, put it on it, and tape it. And now you've got something that will breathe. Make sure that the kids don't put a lid on it. Their plant still needs to breathe. And, um, but they can add water through the top periodically as it dries up. And hopefully, based on whatever you planted, it will start to sprout after a little while. Lots and lots of great ideas there. Um, and it looks like um, some of you are working with local farmers, working with other groups, 
egg cartons. Great idea. Egg cartons is a great starter. So just something um, at, that will give the kids something to do while you're discussing the role of what life needs, what the different elements are, the air, the water, the soil, um, all the different parts and pieces that life requires. And the temperature, the warmth, um, having, having all of those pieces is, is a good part of it. Lisa, I'm sorry that you're not um, hearing things terribly well. I think that, um, that maybe Kelly might be able to help you with that. Um, so for those of you having technical issues, uh, please continue to let Kelly know in the chat box and we'll see what we can do to help you. Um, we don't need to actually have your microphone. Don't worry too much about that. Um, with 50 people, if everyone tried to talk at the same time, no one would hear. So we primarily want your feedback in the chat box, please. Recipe for a region. We're going to do um, this activity next. So, last activity for this webinar. We'll do three more in a, a few minutes. I'm going to invite all of all of my teammates to come on up here to the front for this. And avoid the dirt that I have managed to get all over the floor. <laughs> So recipe for a region here, this particular activity is about exploring the uniqueness of climate and agriculture for a region. Um, so what, what your participants would do is you would learn a little bit more about your region's climate and what affects the local agriculture. Then you would take some particular ingredient that is prominent in your region and you would have the kids work in groups. Um, each group can make a different recipe. Now they can look up recipes in cookbooks or online, or they can actually physically make it. So, a little bit more about a particular region. Let's go ahead and we're going to focus for this purpose. Um, Joey, can you click back on the PowerPoint? Thank you. Um, we're going to focus on the south here. And um, I have handouts for each of these lovely folks about this region. Uh, we happen to be here in Texas, in Houston, where it's very humid, and in this region, um, the, the elevation tends to be pretty low, except there are some parts up in Texas that are in Oklahoma that are a little bit higher altitude. Um, we're very near uh, a very large body of water, the Gulf of Mexico, and that tends to dominate our climate here. Um, the climate is mild down here in general compared to most of the U.S. Um, as dry, those of us in Houston would beg to differ. Um, <laughs> it is not particularly dry here in Houston. Um, the temperatures, though, do tend to be somewhat mild, and we get a lot of precipitation. Um, the closer we are to the Gulf, the more precipitation we receive, coastal Louisiana and coastal Texas, but then as you go further to the west, it, it gets drier, further to the west and north. So given that for our region, um, what sorts of things do you folks know are grown, raised, or farmed, or grown here in our area? Any thoughts? What else? Cattle. Texas is known for cattle. Absolutely. People raise cattle here. What else? Fish. Yeah. There's a lot of seafood, especially here in Houston and Louisiana. Absolutely. A lot of seafood, a lot of fishing. Um, any other ideas about crops? Oranges. Oranges. We do have oranges, absolutely. We've got a variety of things. There's a lot of crops here, frankly. So um, here's uh, th this information is in the activity write-up. Your kids don't have to guess what's where, but they can share their own experiences. Um, as as we've driven, Andy mentioned uh, oranges. A lot of citrus is here in Texas, and uh, there's also melons. Um, Oklahoma has peanuts and pecans. Pecans are also true here in Texas. Seafood in Louisiana, there's also seafood here. Um, Arkansas is the number one producer of rice. I did not know that. And uh, soybeans. So um, we, I see lots of good comments there. Chickens and peaches and tomatoes and peppers, all sorts of different ingredients that um, might be um, <laughs> Arkansas and rice. I did not know that either. So the second part of it, now that we talked a little bit about some of the different crops that are in the area, 
and you would want to next you would want to focus on the crops and the agriculture from where you live with the kids. The next part of it is to talk about um, picking one ingredient, and that one ingredient each group is going to use to make a recipe. So um, the form that the kids get to fill out, they get to pick what unique ingredients they would pick. They would pick something that's from the area that they want to use in their recipe, and then they can look up a recipe with it. So for you, as you are working with the kids, you could pick out an assortment of materials that you know are grown in your area, um, and you could have them uh, give options of making a trail mix with one or more of them, and, and a few other things that aren't necessarily grown in the area, they doesn't have to be completely locally produced. Um, and so is there one ingredient in that? Peanuts. Pecans. Pecans and peanuts. Awesome. So we could do something like a pecan salad or a pecan trail mix. Pecan <laughs> and Yolanda said peanuts, even though it's not her favorite, because I asked her to. Um, because one thing that I have made with, uh, with kids before is peanut butter pie, and it's no bake. And uh, it's very, very easy, and you don't need electricity to do it. So this particular pie has peanut butter and graham crackers, cream cheese, sugar, and I, I, I put it in the freezer, and we're going to maybe have some in just a minute as soon as we're done. No, I'm not going to throw it in anyone's face. I will not throw it in anyone's face. Anyway, um, so um, berries, yes, no cooked jello. You can um, let the kids decide what recipe, and they don't have to make a recipe there. They could just design their recipes, or you could actually give them the opportunity to make one, put one together. Sunflowers, sunflower seeds, those sorts of things would be op op optimal. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are just about out of time. We only have a few minutes left. So, let's go ahead and any, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yay, yay, yay. Um, pie. Yes, here's the pie. Here's the pie. And there are bowls there and spoons there on the other side of the table. And a knife for cutting it. It's you. Well, <laughs> she does have to share. <laughs> um, interactive part. What changes would you make to any of these activities? How would you modify them for your audiences? What would you do? I'm going to give you 30 seconds to start typing in your thoughts for the implementation. How would you modify these and use them at your facility, at your program, with your audiences? 30 seconds. And while you're starting to type, I will share with you, again, some websites. The LCI does have these activities and others on our Explore website. StarNet has a variety of activities under, the, under their clearinghouse. And um, great. Grow native plants. Absolutely. If you're going to do a, a garden, you might want to figure out which plants are the native plants that are bee friendly that you can grow with your audiences. That's a great idea. Iron Chef events. So this is the idea here of what sort of an Iron Chef event. Absolutely. And add a neat local element to it. Great ideas here. Have the teams make their recipe. You could have a buffet. Invite their friends to come join. Fabulous. Having the teams uh, draw on an eraser board uh, instead of dressing up themselves. So some of the different fruits and vegetables that you would make available for them to do things. Set up stations for them to mentor a younger kid. I like that. And the sewing. A mannequin for the weather game. You could have them dress a mannequin. <laughs> awesome. And dramatizing the weather along with it, giving them some extra elements. Storm and rain sounds. I like that very much. Okay. We have a final survey that when you close out, the system is going to automatically take you to that. Um, and once you're done with the survey, it will send you to a link for a certificate that you can complete. But we are going to do a drawing for those posters now. So um, I have up on Google, Google has this wonderful random number generator. And we have 59 participants. So I'm going to have it generate a number between 1 and 59. Yolanda, do we have people's names numbered? Yes. We do. We have people's names numbered. So, I am going to generate a number, and the first number is number 42. Do we have somebody number 42 who's here? It's, and now we're, we're looking at 
I, I, you know what? Actually, how many numbers should I include? Should I include 59 or should I include everybody? I take it back. I'm not going to do 1 to 59 because we're doing everybody who registered, and then if they're not here, they don't win. How many numbers should it be between 1 and, 1 and 53? Between 1 and 53. Okay. All right. 28. Is number 28 here? Who's number 28 on your list? Suzanne Kestel, you won! Yay! Woo! Woo -hoo -hoo. And um, because I did click number 42 earlier, who was number 42? Keisha Parks. Keisha Parks, you won as well! Woo -hoo -hoo. So Keisha, we will be in touch with both of you to get an address to mail those posters to. Yay, hey, hey! They got the, they got the, the <laughs> they get the thunderstorm one. Yes, they get the thunderstorm one with some 3D glasses as well as the earth science one. So, ladies and gentlemen, we will um, we we are going to take a break now for 15 minutes. Please take your chance to to rehydrate and maybe dehydrate, and we'll see you back in a few more minutes. Okay. And everyone, please feel free to leave this room open. We will just uh, leave the, the the WebEx running and come back in uh, 15 minutes. Thanks. And Christine, would you like the uh, poll about the climate? No, the very first poll again. We probably have some different folks here. So the poll about the um, about whether they've done activities, explore activities, or start at activities before. If it will let you. If it doesn't like repeat questions, then we can skip it. <laughs> I think it does not like repeat questions. <laughs> okay. So if you could please uh, enter in the chat for us. If you have ever used LCI, uh, explore activities or Starnet activities before in your programs, or if you've never heard of them before or interested in learning more, please let us know there in the chat. And uh, again, welcome to Earth Science for a Better World, part two of the webinar. If you weren't able to join us for part one, don't worry, the uh, webinar is being recorded and you can check uh, on that part of the, the activities that we covered uh, at a later time at your convenience. And uh, my name is Kellyan Lacante. I'm the Professional Development Manager at the National Center for Interactive Learning at the Space Science Institute. And I'd like to welcome our presenters, but before I get to that, I just want to make sure that you are able to see what you need to see and use this platform uh, to your fullest advantage. So there on your left of your screen, you should be seeing a slide deck, uh, beginning with one that has on the upper uh, edge there, uh, Earth Science for a Better World Part 2. So if you're not seeing that, then uh, look for a place where you can click on an Earth Science tab up near the top, and that should bring that back into view for you. Also on your right, you should be able to see a, a participants panel, and if you click on that and it pops open, you should be able to see a streaming video feed uh, featuring our presenters. So I'll be there in the little corner. Hey. Um, and uh, we will be showing lots of activities on that video stream, so please be sure to, to keep that open again. Uh, when we do open up polls, it will uh, pop that open and shift your view a little bit, but uh, always know you can pop back to those views that, by clicking on the, the title of that section. Also, there's a chat area, and we'd love for you to interact with us during this webinar by just chatting in there, typing in uh, your perspectives, your comments, your questions, and uh, let us know how this experience is going for you and what you're thinking and what you'd like to do with these kinds of materials. So uh, please do keep busy in the chat and let us know, of course, if you've got any technical issues as well. And uh, with that, I'd like to get started by introducing Christine Shukla. Uh, she is the Education Lead at the Lunar and Planetary Institute, where she helps out with management responsibilities, but also gets to do all sorts of fun stuff, like uh, professional development and developing materials for teachers, informal science educators, librarians, and 
out-of-school time uh, program providers. So it's my pleasure to introduce you to Christine. Thank you so much, Kelly, and we're delighted to be with you today. Um, we're going to be sharing several activities. Many of these uh, I've worked together with Kelly and Honor. In some cases, she developed them uh, a while back. So um, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I think that the ball got passed to me again, Joey. I think that happened again. Um, can you make sure that we're clicked on that first slide? Thank you. Okay. So. Um, the activities that we're demonstrating are just a few of the ones that are available, the different earth science activities at the StarNet library site. If you are looking for resources for libraries, please do contact Kelly and, or Ann Holland um, there for their community and, and look at all the different activities and webinars that they have. In addition to StarNet, the Explore program here at LPI has a variety of activities on our website. Um, so please do contact us as well when you're looking for things. So this particular webinar, we're covering three new activities, Catch the World's Oceans, Icy Experiences, and Polar Bears Glow with the Flows. So for the very first activity, I'm going to have my colleagues come on up here to the front and we'll introduce them. Come on up. Now take it, take it, take it. So we have Dr. Patricia Craig. She is a Mars scientist. Uh, she is on, virtually on the Mars Curiosity rover. She isn't physically at Mars right now. Um, and with us also, <laughs> yes, gosh darn it, um, Doris Kramer is our professional lunatic. She studies the moon. Yolanda Ballard, our administrative assistant who handles all of the things, including helping to make this all happen. And Andy Shainer, who is, is the lead for all of our public engagement programs. <laughs> They've been throwing the earth around quite a bit for Catch the Earth's Oceans, the world's oceans. So for this first activity uh, here that we're doing for this webinar, um, one of the important parts is about the water on the earth. Uh, on the earth. Uh, water is a key component to earth. Oceans cover roughly three quarters of the earth's surface and they play an important role in weather and climate all over the world. Even in those places far away from the coast, they play a very strong role here in Houston with the humidity and the climate. But so for this activity, what we're going to do, um, you want to start off by engaging your audiences about water, thinking about water, how they use it in their daily lives, <laughs> where the water is found on the earth, have a conversation with them. But then after that, this is a great activity as an <laughs> opening uh, engagement. Um, so they're going to be tossing the earth to each other. So what we have to pick a spot. And, and you can be creative, yes, you can make it like your elbow or something, but we're going to make it our right thumb. So everybody, your right thumb. Uh, when you toss the earth at somebody, whichever spot your right thumb is touching, you're going to holler out whether it's land or ocean. Okay? And you're going to say your name, and then the person who catches the earth is going to thank that person by name. It's a way to get to know each other's names and then say what their name is and say land or ocean. And I am going to start keeping track here of land versus ocean. So um, I'm going to keep score, land versus ocean. Uh, that would be great. A circle would be fabulous. <laughs> and um, Patricia, move closer to the camera. There we go. And um, George, can you take uh, one step uh, maybe towards Andy? There we go. <laughs> so, um, thank, so yeah, thank you, Yolanda. My name's George. I'm in the ocean. Okay. <laughs> Next one. <laughs> Thanks, George. My name's Andy, and I'm. I'm either I'm either on the ocean or, or, or close to Alaska. <laughs> we're gonna say, we're gonna say land. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, Andy. I'm Patricia, and my right thumb is in the ocean. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Patricia. <laughs> I'm Yolanda, and I'm on land. Aww. Thanks, Yolanda. <clears throat> I'm George, and my thumb is in the ocean again. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, George. I'm Patricia, and my thumb is in the ocean again. Thanks, Patricia. <laughs> my name is Andy, 
And I, I'm pretty sure it's just land. <laughs> Again. I did. It's just the end. Thanks, Andy. I'm short. And I am close to the coast, but I think mostly in the ocean. Okay. It's the Mediterranean. That doesn't count. <laughs> George, I'm Andy, and I'm in the ocean. Thanks, <laughs> 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 hey, Andy. I'm Tricia, and I am in the ocean again. Okay, let's pause right there. Good job, folks. We have, okay, you can help me calculate here. We have seven oceans and three lands. Well, that's, that's part two prime numbers. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, seven out of ten, right, are in the ocean, so that's seventy percent, right? Wow, it's like the ocean is seventy percent covering the, the It's like globe. we planned that. Yeah. Amazing. Awesome. Like supposed to happen. We never did cruise for our thumbs there, did we? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so thank you very much. So, yeah, if you do it long enough, you might get close to 70%. You need an earth that's nice and soft. You don't want them throwing a hard globe at each other. And, um, but it can be quite a bit of fun. So, before our next activity, we have another poll for you. This one we know works. So, uh, a question about your experiences with ice. Yes? Just real quick. Um, Please. Christine was talking about uh, soft planets, soft globes. This is called Hug a Planet, and you can actually purchase these. Um, they have Earth, they also have Mars and the Moon, so you can do um, you know, other activities with the other soft globes. Absolutely. And there's also, there's also inflatable Earth. Some of you might have an inflatable uh, Earth with uh, the countries and things on it. So. Awesome. Let's go ahead and start that poll for you. And uh, what are your experiences with snow and ice outside? You spent lots of time in the snow dealing with ice. Have you never seen snow? You've occasionally experienced icy weather. So what, what are your experiences with ice and snow? For this next activity, we are going to be talking about experiences with ice and snow. Ice does play an important role in our lives, even though not all of us think about it. We don't see it very often down here in Houston. Um, but some areas on Earth do have ice all the time. Some sometimes have ice. Others never have ice outside. And so we're going to be talking about experiences with ice and again, this is another opening engagement activity with kids that you can do at the beginning of a sequence to let them get to know each other by playing ice bingo. So, Kelly, let's go ahead and let's close that poll. And while we're closing that poll, it's going to take a few seconds for it to come up with the answers here. Um, we have uh, several of you have dealt, 20 of you have pl spent plenty of time with snow. And, and some of you have occasionally experienced it. We didn't have anybody say they've never seen snow, so that's good. Everyone's at least seen snow once. So for our ice bingo game, you want the kids to have, and if you haven't um, opened up, uh, you, in order to see the video again, you might need to open up the participants box there to see the video. Um, the um, ice bingo cards are cards that look like, um, Joey, let's go ahead and let's activate the thing again. Thank you. Um, this is what the cards look like. And you want to give each kid their own personal card and let them talk to each other and have people initial it. So, George, Andy, Yolanda, Patricia, next activity here. Each of you gets an ice bingo card, and you each need a writing utensil. And you guys are going to talk to each other and see if you can find one-on-one, -on -one, so no fair cheating and having everybody answer simultaneously. Talk to each other one-on-one -on -one and see if you can have somebody else initial some of these spots for you. Someone who has had a snowball fight, for instance, would initial under I have had a snowball fight. Whoever, of course, gets their spelled out first, uh, a line or a row wins. So what if you had these things? Nope. It has to be somebody else. It has to be somebody else. So this is the interactive part. You folks interact with each other. You folks can also comment in the chat box what experiences you've had. If you want to type in, what should these experiences have you had? Wait, wait, wait. I got a question. What's your question? I save energy, but not physical. I just felt a lot of motivation. It's a result. Okay. Oh, I just Okay. I have. Um, oh, shoot. 
Polar bears. This next activity, polar bears go with the flows. Polar bears go with the flows. Um, this activity is going to take a little bit longer. This activity, it's a board game, and it's got a lot of information in it. The activity write-up has detailed information in it about climate change. It has detailed uh, background information for you. You don't need to share all the background information with the kids. There are fun ways to share information with the kids so that they can learn more. But the activity itself, as a game, has pieces that you would use. So um, uh, key points are about how the choices that we make are going to affect our planet, and that some of these choices require us to make changes in how we live. Um, human action does have an impact on our environment and on the ecosystem. The melting sea ice, the flows, affects not only those things living in the water, but it also affects other mammals and birds and organisms. And this game is kind of at a level for, um, for tweens and teens. Um, you could modify it for younger kids. They would certainly enjoy playing a board game as well. But right now it's written at an uh, age for a little bit older, for I would say about 10-year-olds and up. If you wanted to make it more accessible for 8-year-olds and 6-year-olds, you might want to change some of the text and some of the, and the pieces. The full activity, including the game board and the cards, are all available online. This is what the game board looks like. And Joey, we can go ahead and switch cameras, too, whenever you're ready. So here's, uh, you can see the game board. You can see the pieces. Um, and there's a number of different things. Each, each spot on the game board has bloopers, facts, um, and then um, what I would like our people to do, let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit here. Um, Um, what we've put on the game board is we've put some of these different foam, bo foam board ice pieces. And there's a polar bear. We're going to put the polar bear on top of the ice. And the polar bear may or may not want to stand up. <laughs> um, and each of our folks gets to pick one of the animals to be. So over here, um, let's take a look. Uh, what are some of the different animals? And each of you gets to pick one. Your choices could include a wolf, uh, um, an elk, a, um, a beluga whale. A beluga whale. You could be a seal. You can be uh, an owl. You could be an orca. There's a walrus. So, so everybody have an animal? Okay, so they've each got a critter here. And um, you can find on the board there, um, there's, uh, there's some, there's some, okay, before we start playing, everybody needs a certain number of points. So there's those cards that are specifically for points. Um, the, yeah, the green, the green points. So everybody's going to get four of those. And, and you can shuffle them. They're, they're not all worth, worth equal amounts of money. Of the, of the, so that way, that's sort of your cash in your pocket, how much you start off with at the beginning of the game. Okay. Okay. So everybody got four of them. And so you can look and see how much cash you've got in your pocket. It'll tell you the number of points. As you play the game, you're going to start off at start and uh, roll the dice, just one die, in fact. And if you land on an eco fact, you get to pick an eco fact card and read it. If you land on an eco blooper, you're going to have to pay. You can either pay the number of points using your own green points. You can go back five squares. You can only do that twice. Or you can remove a piece of the ice. Now, if you don't have enough green points, you can see if other teammates want to contribute to help pay what you owe. And pe multiple people can contribute. Nobody has to, okay? But the idea here is that at the very end, after everybody has finished the last square, if there's at least one piece of ice flow left, everybody wins, and whoever has the most green points left is the big winner.
On the other hand, if there's no ice left for the polar bear, then everybody loses. Oh my goodness. And we all go home sad. So, let's have you ladies and gentlemen start. Uh, go ahead and figure out, if you want to roll to see who starts first, you can. Me. Okay. okay. Uh, and um, Joe, let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit so that they can see what everybody's doing here too. Okay. So Yolanda's starting first, and she rolled a three, and she is moving three spaces. Oh, she landed on a blooper, so she has to pick a blooper card. And the eco blooper cards, what does it say? There's a lots and lots of ways to save energy, and you don't share them with your friends and family. It says she knows lots of ways. You know what, Joey? I'm gonna can, I'm gonna move this microphone a little bit closer over here. So, how many points do you owe for not sharing the ways to save energy with your friends and colleagues? Ten thousand points. She owes ten thousand points. So, do you have ten thousand points that you want to pay, or are you gonna? She does. Okay. So put them in a discard pile. We're going to start a discard pile. Are you supposed to read the back? Um, yes. To start a carpool to get to school, your father drives you and three friends who live nearby to school instead of each of you being driven separately every day. So that's just one of the ways, one of the things you could share with us. But no, that's just the rich <laughs> <laughs> Your long shower and high flow shower head waste water and the energy it takes to heat the water. That's what? Okay. Then the time you need to get clean and then get out. I tell my son that every time. <laughs> 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 so I don't want to try it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, 
rather than continuing to play the game, oh, I like you like the game? I'll let you keep playing the game. I'm going to move the microphone back over this way, and uh, Joey, we're going to switch back, and we're going to finish up our discussions here. But we'll let um, you know who wins. Well, yeah, th they're going to keep playing. They're going to let us know who wins. But um, uh, you didn't come here to sit, uh, to sit and watch people play a game for half an hour, so. Um, it will take it will take them at least 15 minutes and maybe as long as half an hour to finish the game. Um, so we have different ideas here, including modifying it um, for uh, different circumstances. Uh, ideas including having uh, uh, the tweens and teens mentor with the kids. That's great. Uh, that way you're having the teens learn and the kids that they're mentoring learn, and they're working together. So. Um, these are just a few of some of the different earth science activities that are available on the StarNet and the Explore website. Um, so are there other implementation ideas in general that you would like to share or other earth science activities that you've done that you would like to share? I'm going to give you one minute to share out any other ideas that you would have in terms of how you would implement these into your program. Are these things that we've shared today things that you could use in a summer reading program? Are there things you could use after school? Are there things that you could use with younger audiences or that you could modify for older audiences? Are there other activities that we've shared or that you've done that you want to let other people know about? Now's your time. Tokens to the players. How often have they had to backtrack? That's a great idea. I like that. Um, for Catch the World's Oceans, you divide the kids into teams. Have a contest to see which team gets the most oceans. Awesome. <laughs> Although they might fudge it a little bit. <laughs> it's near the coastline. That counts, right? <laughs> but yeah, having a contest is a great way to get them motivated. And uh, thinking about it in terms of, of shifting ladders. Yeah, um, maybe you could um, change the language a little bit, make it um, simplified. So, and the bingo is an easy game to modify. Yes, absolutely. Icebreakers are lots of fun in between things. And yes, you can have the teens help the other kids, especially with a, a board game, especially if they might have trouble reading some of it or explaining to each other what they mean. So, um, the next thing about the board game is that the intent is to give them ideas to help solve problems and not just make them feel bad. Um, we were mostly getting the eco bloopers, but the eco facts are part of the solution. And for any issue that we face as a community, we are part of the solution working together. So encouraging them to think about solutions and to share their own ideas for solutions is, is a part of it as well. Um, passive program to catch the ocean. So you can have the whole library crowd think like scientists. Awesome, awesome. Again, a reminder, there are plenty of other activities in addition to these on the Explore website and on the StarNet website. In fact, on the StarNet website, some of the earth science activities, we now have videos that you can watch. Uh, you, there's a video that we've created where you can build your own thermometer and have the kids build the, and test their own thermometers. There's an activity there where you can have them generate winds using a toaster and, and fly a little aluminum or paper kite, see what happens to it with the toaster. Um, there's, there's numerous activities on the StarNet website related to earth science and numerous activities on the Explore website, not just to earth science, but also to space science on both, on both websites. So uh, please do visit them. We are going to be doing a drawing momentarily, but please be sure to give us your reactions to the surveys today, to uh, both the first one and the one that we're finishing up now. We would love to hear your thoughts, and, uh, and, and if there isn't a question there that you would like to answer, you are welcome to email Kelly or myself. 
we want to know more about how we can best help you with your STEM engagement at your facility. So, it is time for another drawing. Yolanda, let's go ahead and let us generate some more numbers. Random number generator. I think this time I'm going to go between 1 and 92. I know we have 57 people online with us right now. So a number that we pick might not be somebody that's here, but I want to make sure that we absolutely get everybody potentially. So um, first number here is a number 89. Is, is number 89 with us today, Yolanda? No. No, they are not. They missed. So let's do another one. Number 20. Is number 20 with us? Teresa Tidwell. Teresa Tidwell, you have just won two posters. As a reminder, which posters you've won? The first one is a 3D image of lightning. Woo woo woo, thunderstorm. It doesn't get much more earth sciencey than that. And the other poster that you've won is a beautiful NASA poster of the Earth Observing System, Kara. So, Teresa won. Yay! We are double checking to make sure she is here. She was at the present at the first one. We want to make sure she's still here. She is not still here. I take it back, Teresa, you have not won. Unless, unless we have you listed under Tidwell. Nope. She is not here. We're going to have to pick somebody else. So sorry. <laughs> We're going to have to pick somebody else. Number 34. Who's number 34? Tidwell is here. Okay, Teresa, you did win. Yay. She's just not paying attention, it says, but she is here. So Teresa won. And, um, And who's number 34? Did number th is number 34 here? 34. Yeah, the numbers are out of order, so sorry about that. Rocio Espinosa. Rocio Espinosa. Is Rocio Espinosa here? No, nope, not here. Let's okay, do another. I'll take them. <laughs> number. The next number it generated was number thirty-five. Wait, did it generate No, it generated thirty-four. Oh. Mm. Poor number thirty-five really thought they weren't going to win. <laughs> Gail Zachariah. Gail Zachariah is Gail Zachariah here? Gail Zachariah is here. Yay! Woo 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 woo! But did we have two winners for this time or no? Yolanda? Did we decide that you know that one person I don't know if they're actually literally here. I don't think she was here. So okay, we're gonna do one more then. One more. Thirteen. Who's number thirteen? Sarah Frost. Sarah Frost. Sarah Frost, are you here? Yes. Yes, she's here. Okay, woo woo woo! We have our winners. So folks, if there's anything else related that you are looking for, please let us know. If you need us, our help in finding things, please let us know. Um, Joy, let's go to the last slide. Thank you all so much. There is uh, another webinar coming up that StarNet is hosting for you on activities for your CLICS program. That is on uh, April the 26th. If you're looking for anything related to today's activities, you are welcome to contact me. Um, you are also welcome to contact Kelly, and she knows all about all of these activities. And, um, and thank you so much for joining us today.